say? Mr. Moore, you are always excited about doing math. I am! What can I say? I love math. Math is really cool, you know? So let's go ahead and get started. We have ourselves lesson 4.3. Woohoo! Yes, we're cruising through chapter 4. Moving into little division, eh? Huh? Chapter 4. And our topic today, as you can see, is interpret the remainder. Meaning we get a remainder, and what can we say about that remainder is probably something that we're going to do. But we do have our essential question. That's right, my folks. Essential question? Yeah, it kind of lets us know. What we're learning, what's the goal? What's our objective? What's our learning target? What's our learning intention? I know all these different jargon words that mean the same thing, like what our purpose. And it says, how can you use remainders in division problem? Okay, well, I'm really excited about that. I always get nervous in this part of the video because, well, because we really can't go on, you know? I mean, it's like we can't. But why not? Because we have to unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because it's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now it says Magda has some leftover wallpaper 73 inches long. She wants to cut it into eight pieces to use around the photos in her scrapbook. Each piece will have equal length. How long will each piece be? Woo! Okay. Now, now I have to stop because, well, I read the problem. That's cool, but... How much do I really understand what I need to do? And I'm thinking to myself, some questions that, what, what do I know? Well, I definitely know that Magda, okay, she has some leftover wallpaper. It's 73 inches long. She wants to cut it into eight pieces to use around the photos in her scrapbook. So what we do know is we know the total length of the leftover wallpaper. And I'm going to go ahead and just underline that. And with my 73 inches long, what I'm actually thinking is I'm thinking this is almost like our dividend. And if you recall, our dividend is that number in a division problem that we're trying to actually break up into groups or make equal groups from. That's the dividend. She wants to cut it into eight pieces to use around the photos in her scrapbook. I'm underlining this because, well, we already know how many groups. So this is the sense of like, how many groups do we have? We already know. The groups are going to be eight of them. We have eight. That means that this is partitive division and you'll probably get this next year but partitive division just means that we're not looking to see how many groups we have we're trying to look at the size of the group so we want to know how many of those inches long of that wallpaper could we put with each group here now it says each piece will have an equal length okay that lets you definitely know right here that it's division and when you start talking about equal length you're probably referring to division you're probably trying to take something and we're trying to put it into equal pieces division works really well for that now it says how how long will each piece be? You tell right away here, then our answer is going to be actually in the inches. Since we have 73 inches, that means there's going to be so many inches of each one of those pieces in that group. Okay. Now it does say when you solve a division problem with the remainder, the way you interpret the remainder depends on the situation and the question. Okay. I like how they say that because it's a real world problem, right? One way, it says to write the remainder as a fraction, okay? And so sometimes we can write the remainder as a fraction. We have the numerator, right, that's on the top, and we have the denominator that's on the bottom. So here it says the divisor is, well, we know the divisor is eight pieces, okay? We saw that up above. And that divisor in this situation ends up being the number of groups. And I'm just going to write my little hashtag. I used to call the pound sign, but now because of Twitter, it's hashtag, hashtag the number of groups. Now it says the blank is 73 inches. Well, that would be the dividend, wouldn't it be? Now we come down here, it says divide to find the quotient and remainder. Remember that quotient is this right here. That's our nine. Okay. And it turns out, I guess that that's nine because eight times nine is going to give you a quantity of 72. And maybe you're so familiar with the long division where we divide the number in, which we think is dad, mother, because we're going to multiply the nine and eight together. Then we have um, sister for subtract. There's just one left over here. And then of course we have um, brother, and that's just if we're going to bring down another one. But So this remainder went up top here. So what we have then is we have nine. The remainder represents one inch over, okay, because we couldn't put that into any more of the eight groups. So, which can also be divided into eight equal parts and written as a fraction. Okay, so this is something that we can do. So since we know the divisor is eight, we can take that one now, 
say that's our remainder, and then take our divisor, which of course we already know is the eight, and now we can actually say that it can be written as a fraction, one eighth. Now write the quotient with the remainder written as a fraction. Okay, so we're gonna have nine inches, and then we're gonna have our one eighth. So each piece will be nine and, whenever we say that word and, that's a sign of a fraction or a decimal, okay? Whenever you, we use the word and. And the reason why I'm just writing this down, because it's really easy to say and when we say like 345. But whenever we use the word and in math, we're referring to that now we're talking it's what's to the right of the decimal, okay? I say to the right of the decimal, meaning here's our whole number part, here's the part. So you have whole part, and then of course you have part would be the best way to describe that, just a part. It's not the whole part, it's just a part. And that's what we have here. We have nine is a whole part, one eighth is the part. And that one eighth is your fraction and your decimal. So we always sneak in that word in there. And I'm gonna put my carrot going this way. You just sneak that word in your and because we know what's to the right of it is less than one whole. Nine and one eighth inches long. Okay, I don't know, how does that sound to you? Pretty good, pretty good. So any more on the bottom here? Indeed we do, we have try this, okay. Daniel made 32 ounces of soup for five people. 32 ounces of soup for five people. Again, I'm underlining what I I know in the problem. I guess I should circle that which I don't know. Like here, how many ounces will each person get? Complete the division. So again, this is my dividend. This here is my actual divisor. So this is a divisor. And you can see the divisor is always right out here on the outside of our division. And then here we have the dividend. Okay, and I'm gonna just write it one more time. So you see these words spell. Because the better you understand the vocabulary, the better it's gonna help you understand the math. So here, we wanna see how many times five is actually gonna go into 32, and that's the dividing part in. So we divide in, and that's the dad. And so five times six is 30. That will make it in there. See, the 30 didn't go over the 32, so six would work. So if I put a six up here, now I'm gonna do the mother which is the multiply. I always like to put my multiplication side here because it kind of reminds me of the fact that I need to take five times six. And five times six is 30. That's gonna leave me with two left over. And that was my subtracting, I just did sister. Now my remainder is less than the divisor, so that's a good sign. That means that I took out and divided as many as I could to six. But I can't go any further because I don't have any other digits. And here they're not asking us to figure out a decimal. That's for like later, okay? And so that said, I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, I'm gonna take my remainder. Remember my remainder goes on the top. Oh, that's a weird looking too. Oh, it looks like a Z. Oh, I can't live with that. No. Ah, oh, much better. I even got a kind of a blue color. Cool. So that's my remainder. And then remember, out of the divisor, which was the five. So now we can say that each person is going to get six, remember, and, because we have that fraction, Remember, we have that fraction. Refer you back up here again. Whenever we have that fraction, that's where I'm gonna stick in that and, all right? And that's true for a decimal too because two-fifths can be written as a decimal as well. Fractions and decimals, they're like kin folk. They're like siblings. They're almost like identical twins almost, right? Okay. Mr. Wara, really? I don't know, I'm just really trying to describe. They're like the same thing. They just look a little bit different. Identical twins don't ex look exactly the same, but they're pretty close. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying. So, that being said, I think we're done with this problem. Yes, is there anything else? Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go on to the next page. Now we have something that says... Other ways. That's right, there's not just one way you can do things. You can do things in multiple ways. Now we have... Use only the quotient. So I'm taking a look at this picture over here. Look what she doing here. Is she blowing up? Looks like a balloon. I believe so. Maybe it's something that's kind of something special. I don't know. Looks really scientific. We'll find out here. Ah, here it says, Ben is a tour guide at a glass blowing studio. Ooh, glass. It says that he can take no more than seven people at a time on a tour. If 80 people want to see the glass blowing demonstration, how many groups of seven people will Ben show around? Okay. Wow. So, you know, a lot of my questions come to mind. The same questions I've, that I always have. First question is, is, what do I know? Well, we know right here that Ben, Ben can take no more than seven people at a time on a tour. Ooh, my line's a little wavy. We also know that 80 people, okay, they wanna see the show, this demonstration, okay? So then how many groups of seven people will Ben show around? Which of course is what we're trying to find out here. Okay, so I'm just gonna circle this. 
There we go, something like that. So you can just kind of see what I know, what I need to find out. So it says first, decide to find the quotient and remainder. Then decide how to use the quotient and remainder. So first thing I need is divide. Well, why do I have to divide? What's the purpose? Can I explain in words why I need to divide here? And I can tell you that my mind and what I'm thinking right now is that because 80 people want to see the glass blowing demonstration, so it's like this big crowd of people, that kind of gives me the idea that, okay, this is the dividend, so this is the number that we're trying to divide because we want to create these groups of seven. So again, we have another example of we have the number of groups. And by the way, that means this is the divisor. And I think the sooner that I can determine what the dividend is in the problem and what the divisor is, is going to help me a lot in solving the problem. So now I have my dividend. I have my divisor. This is clearly something called measurement division. And it's called measurement division is because we don't know how many groups. That's what the question asks. How many groups of seven people? We already know the size of the group and that's seven people. So that's why this is called measurement. We're trying to determine how many groups we're going to have now. So let's go ahead and continue then. Well, the quotient is, let's figure that out. So we had 80, we're dividing that by seven. You can see that seven will go into eight just one time. We can divide that into, remember? Good old dad. Okay, we divide that seven into the eight. We can divide it in there one time. Now we multiply the seven and the one, and that's going to give us seven. And already we've done mother now. Now we move to sister. We subtract and we get one left over. Okay, by the way, I don't use this with all my students all the time, but I'm thinking being in the fourth grade, just starting this, this might be very helpful because students do tend to forget what steps come next. It just, it's a natural thing. It's a weird thing that you just have to memorize these rules and how you divide. But anyway, you bring the zero down, that's the brother. The brother brings the zero down because there is a zero there we did not use. Seven will go into 10 now, one time, that's why you can see the other one up there. And now with that, it's going to give us seven, but it's going to give us a range or I'm going to move it over here. Okay, running out of room here. And that's going to be a three. If you subtract seven from 10, you get three left over. So that means you have a remainder of three. So we have 11 remainder of three. That makes sense because seven times 11 is 77. And if you add on the three, you're going to get 80, which will get us back over there. So the quotient here is definitely 11. The remainder here is three. Now it says here that Ben can give tours to seven people at a time. The quotient is the number of tour groups of exactly seven people he can show around. So Ben gives tours to how many groups of people? 11 groups of seven people. If you have 11 groups of seven people, then you have 77 people. You can see the three people are just going to be standing there, right? So that's why it says add one to the quotient. It says if Ben gives tours to all 80 people, how many tours will he give? Well, a tour can have no more than seven people. So to show all 80 people around, Ben will have to give one more tour. And we just call that the kind of the plus one with the quotient. And we add that plus one because three people won't get to go otherwise. So he's actually going to give 12 tours in all. And we don't say in this situation like we did last time that there'd be 11 groups. We had three left over, over the divisor, which was seven. And we don't say 11 and three sevenths tours. That wouldn't make sense. You, with a tour, you either complete the tour or you don't. It's like a whole part. So it doesn't make sense. So this wouldn't be the correct answer. You would need to add one. Now, obviously the last tour, there'd only be three people in the group, probably good for them, right? It'd be like a real kind of intimate small group as opposed to a larger group of seven. Now let's come down and see what we, else we have here. Now it says use only the remainder. So now it says Ben gives tours to all 80 people. After he completes the tours for groups of seven people, how many people are in his last tour? Well, we already talked about that, right? The remainder is three. So Ben's last tour will have just three people because that's what remainder means like left over and what was left over were three people okay that's what was actually left over that's what the remainder would be now we also have this try this students are driven to soccer games in vans each van holds nine students how many vans are needed for 31 students so now they're trying to get us to jump right to a we need to recognize that as the dividend this is also well the question is this is what i'm trying to find out how many vans are needed okay how many vans that's our question but the 31 people uh, 31 students that is our dividend each van holds nine students so we already know how many are going to be in the group so we want measurement division because we know the size of the group each van that's the group is nine students we need to know how many vans so that suggests that we're going to be going after measurement 
division. So we divide 31 divided by 9. So we set it up, 31 divided by 9. Of course, 9 won't go into 3, but it'll go into 31, oh, I'd say about, what, 3 times? That gives us 27. I just did the dividing part, and now I did the multiplying. 9 times 3 is 27. I'm subtracting now, and you can see I'm going to end up with 4, because if I regroup, I end up with 4. So I have remainder 4. So 3, remainder 4. There are 3... And then divide 31 divided by 9. So I am going to put my remainder 4. Not sure if that needs to go there. Since there are blank students left over, since there are four students left over, we're going to need four vans, not three, are going to be needed to carry the 31 students. So here again, that's that plus one situation from the quotient. The quotient was three. But we're talking about real people. And these four people won't have a ride, okay, to the soccer games if there isn't a van. That hardly seems fair. I know. We got to make sure everybody's included, right? There you go, my friends. Oh, my goodness. What? The video is over? No. Really? Already? Oh, my goodness. This is, like, so fast. I mean, get my tissue. Okay. That's okay. I'm good. Like I always say, I'm tough. All good things must come to an end, as they say. Nonetheless, it is time, my friends, to bid you farewell now. Live long and prosper.